Mr. Rice again, and we're back in my garage. And this should be the final video. We need to clean up some things that actually got cut off the last couple of videos. One is to finish the breadboarding exercise, showing how to build a circuit on a breadboard. I need to finish up the parallel component. Once we get that done, I'm gonna jump into the circuit analysis of the series circuit. And we need to talk about actually calculating voltages or measuring voltages across resistors and calculating the current based on that and vice versa, actually calculating the voltages across resistors with current known. So we're gonna get started right now. Back up to the whiteboard and we've got Charlie napping. So we're not gonna get too much help from him today. Okay, quickly, let's finish up from the video that this portion got left off. What we said was with that wireless breadboard where we were making connections by plugging parts and leads into holes, I said that you could, what was convenient about having the rows of holes that are connected across and having, you know, five rather than just having a few of them to make connections is that with five holes across, multiple holes across, it allows you to make also parallel component connections. And we decided to put in a second resistor, R2, parallel to D1, to the diode. <clears throat> parallel meaning that it has common connections with each side of the component, and current will actually split up with two, two separate paths to flow, same common connections. And we can do that by simply going in the same row as one side of the diode, and plugging in the lead to another resistor. We'll make that little cylindrical shape of the resistor along that same row that this side of the diode was plugged into, which makes that common connection between R2 and the top of D1. And then the bottom row that the diode was plugged into, remember all of those holes are connected in common to that row. We take the other lead of the resistor and plug it into a hole there. So again, having those multiple holes that are connected across allows us to not only hook things up in series, but actually hook circuits up in parallel for a little bit more complex of a circuit. And these things can get much more complex than this. So that takes care of that, and I'm gonna move ahead to finishing up the actual mathematical circuit analysis of the two resistors in series with the diode. Let's redraw this. So where we left off was we had an R1, the LED in series with an R2, like so, R2. I got the two right. And in this case, what we said was that R1 was known. When we came in the second part of that lab, and we put an unknown resistor, unknown like so. <clears throat> so with the unknown resistor, we couldn't calculate the current using the other method where we took the two volt constant voltage of the diode and took it away from the nine volts and said that seven volts was applied to the two resistors. We were able to calculate a total resistance and therefore use Ohm's law to find the total current. So in this case, we don't know what R2 is, so we cannot find a total resistance in that way. So what we do per the procedure is we go in, find the current by actually measuring the voltage across to R1. So we take our meter, set it to 20 volts DC, come in with the meter leads. So in the circuit, like this, we would actually physically measure across to R1. And we'll go back and measure R2, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So we're putting, putting our leads across to R1. And in this case, let's just say that the voltage across R1, that we measured it, and we came up with, oh, let's say 1.7 volts DC. With Ohm's law, we need two out of three of the 
values to find a third. So remember, Ohm's law was V for voltage or electrical pressure or difference of potential is equal to I for current in amps, okay, times R, resistance, opposition to current flow in ohms. So that's the basic formula for Ohm's law here. And in this case, we know the resistance here at 330, and we've measured the voltage at 1.7 volts, and what we don't know is the current. But since this is a simple series circuit, if we find I through R1, we can simply say that is the total current because there is only one path for current to flow. So whatever current is flowing through R1, that value of current must be the same in the other components. So let's go ahead and do the math. So I R1, manipulate the formula, is equal to V across R1, specifically across R1, divided by the resistance R1, like so. We put in the values, 1.7 volts divided by 330 ohms, like so, and what we get is about, let's say about 5 milliamps, so 0 0.00 milliamps, like so. Approximating, just to quicken up the video a little bit, but might want to get a little bit more accurate than one significant figure like that. So now that we have the current flow through here, this I through R1 is our IT. So our total series current. And so we're talking about 5 milliamps. And now we're going to move on to the unknown resistor. So we erase that. Remember our current is 5 milliamps. Don't know what that resistance is yet. Make some room. So what we do is, for the procedure, is that, again, on the circuit, we take a voltage measurement across R2 and record that. So right from one lead to the other, the second resistor. And let's say we did that and we came out with something like, oh, let's say we came out with uh, somewhere around... Uh, uh, let's see, about 5 volts, something like that. So that's V R2. Okay. So now what do we know about this? So we know that I total was about 5 milliamps, 0 0.005 amps. We measured the voltage across R2 as being 5 volts. And now we know the current. We know the voltage across R2, and we can find the resistance. We know 2 out of 3 from Ohm's law, 2 out of 3 of the values, okay? So rearranging the formula, go back to black. This formula, Ohm's law, R2 is equal to V across R2 divided by IR2, which is I total, remember, each component has the same value of current in a series circuit. So whatever current flows through R2 must be the same as what flowed through that we calculated through R1, which was I total of the circuit. Okay, let's put in values. We said 5 volts was measured across VR2. We said 5 milliamps here, 0 0.005. So we do that, we get about 1,000 ohms for R2. Some unknown resistor of 1,000 ohms, which is 1K ohms, like so. So that wraps up the second part of the circuit analysis for the simple series lab with, with the LED in it. And your unknown resistor may not be a 1K ohm resistor. It may be something else, so your numbers are going to be a little different, but this shows the process to find that unknown value.